Hello, and welcome to the Slice of Wine podcast, the podcast that goes into the the places, the people, and the innovations behind the barrel. I'm your host, Amy Cronin, and today I'm speaking with Blake Hershey, the CEO of SIPT. Um, SIPT is a personalized wine recommendation um, technology that helps people gauge which wines they like um, before they actually get a chance to try them. Um, And uh, welcome, Blake. I want to hear more about this. Hey, Amy, thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, I love your content so far. I had the opportunity to listen to uh, a couple of them yesterday. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. So where would you like to begin? Nice to meet you. Well, first, I'd like to um, know how you got into this. Um, <laughs> you, <laughs> the, the, you know, um, a lot of us in the that have been in the wine industry, been in the wine industry for a long time, we weren't in something like, I don't know, NASA technology like you were? And uh, how did you make that their transition? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, I kind of just broke in with a smile on the crowbar. No. <laughs> um, the NASA you know, way. <laughs> as, uh, as many great inspirations come from, this mm-hmm. one, my muse was my uh, now fiance, girlfriend at the time. Um, she came back from a girl's trip, and because I'm into wine, all of her friends were handing her the wine list. And they had like three or four different meals where she was on the hook for picking out several bottles. They weren't cheap and not everybody was happy. And I asked her how the trip was. And for some reason, like that was the thing on her mind that like really kind of dampened the trip. Um, And she said like something so simple. She was just like, I wish that there was an app that would tell me which wines on the wine list I would like or my friends would like. And I thought that for sure there must be something like that out there. Um, and there wasn't. Um, so that was the original inspiration. And at the time, I was working at a company in uh, supporting NASA and Jet Propulsion Laboratories, uh, IT technology for aerospace. And um, I'd had an itch to really just kind of move into like a, a new sector, start my own company. And, you know, I do love wine. And there's a lot of technology that's, being applied to other spaces, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, uh, we see that in our lives all the time, whether it's like a chat box on a website or like Spotify making recommendations yeah. or, you know, different music or Netflix, you have a score for that. Um, and I was just wondering why it wasn't being applied to wine. And I've seen other areas, uh, there's like some subscription services that are doing that mm-hmm. with a more limited amount of wine. Uh, but you know, that only supports a use case if you're subscribing to it, you're having it shipped to your house. But one of the biggest challenges is you go to a restaurant, you have a large list, it's in all different languages. Totally. Right? There's yep. not a lot of description on it either. It's like the year, the producer, the varietals, maybe you don't recognize the varietals. Uh, you don't know yep. what it tastes like. Um, and most restaurants don't have sommeliers, you know? Uh, I'm from the Midwest, West Michigan. like. Yeah. I couldn't pronounce Somalia until I graduated. <laughs> so it's way easier to pronounce wine than it is to pronounce Somalia. <laughs> it's much easier to drink wine than it is yeah. to pronounce Somalia. <laughs> so. And uh, no, and to your point in your wife's conundrum, I mean, there's a lot of pressure at the table to pick the right bottle of wine, especially if people think you might be the one that knows. A lot more pressure than say like picking out the right song in the car. You know, like Spotify provides recommendations, but those, you know, if, if, if you get the wrong, wrong song, it's not a big deal. But when you pick out a wine and like half the table doesn't like it, and you're like, I don't know, I tried, guys. It, you know, it can just put a damper on the evening. So what does Sipped do? How does Sipped help that? How does Sipped yeah, that's, alleviate that? that that's a million dollar question. Um, so we've designed uh, recommendation algorithms that allow users to put in their preferences based on wines they've had in the past. It's a basic five-star uh, rating scale. And our algorithm finds similarities in wines and similarities in users, and then can computate the preferences of like your input to the similarities of other wines that you've never tried. So it helps you kind of see into the future a little bit and know how much you're going to like that juice in that bottle before you've ever opened it. Well, that's really cool. So, I mean, so wine industry professionals have long said, okay, we, we know that there are 
objective and subjective attributes to every wine. So there's the objective, like, is it high in acid? Is it high in alcohol? Is it high in, you know, sugar, you know? And then there's the subjective. Do I like it? <laughs> um, yeah, or, or what does it taste like, right? Which, what does it taste like to me? Yeah, to me, it tastes like, really like I've seen, you know, a lot of descriptions where it's like, you know, bergamot and, you know, right. cherry, black, black cherries and yeah. uh, blueberries and... Honestly, it's of my grandmother's couch. You're like, <laughs> yeah. fresh cut garden hose. Uh, I've been yeah. yeah. into wine for a long time. I really don't have the palate or the vocabulary uh, combination mm -hmm. to detect those things. Like, if you ask me, do I like bell pepper in my wine? Like, I don't know. Like, I, I've seen other platforms where it's like, how do you feel about mushrooms? How do you feel about bell peppers? Uh, I like them in my fajita, but. Like, I know. <laughs> like, how does that translate to, like, you know, a wine recommendation? And that's why when we started on the journey of SIP, we wanted feedback that was, it was subjective, but measured in an objective way, which is why yeah. using a standard star scale makes sense versus trying to relate it to these flavors. And because that gets one much more complicated to relate that to the wines themselves. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, but so by, so... Uh, so you give people the opportunity to say, I like, these are some wines I like. And then you take that, the metadata, you have the objective data on all of those wines. And then from there, you can tell the consumer, okay, you know what? If you like those, these are what you're going to like. Now then how does that translate into the restaurant? Like yeah. if, you know, when I'm sitting there at the table, how does that, how does that work for me in that moment? So just a little bit on the, the recommendations. So we can find similarities in wines, but we also find similarities in users. Uh, because oh, there's not a lot of value in, if I say I like a, you know, a Camus, you know, like a 50 to, you know, $70 Napa Valley Cabernet. Like, mm -hmm. and then if a system just tells you you're going to like other Napa Valley Cabernets around the same price point, like, you don't really need that. You can just go to the store and look at that shelf and look yeah. at the prices, and you're going to find a lot of similarities. So when yeah. you look at similarity of both wines and users, that's where it introduces novelty. Um, so it helps people discover new varietals and new types of wines and new geographies that they had tried. Um, and I, I think that's one of our like b bits of secret sauce. So, yeah, that sounds yeah. because if I go to a restaurant and I'm say I'm, you know, I'm a Napa Valley Merlot drinker. I love my Napa Valley Merlot. I go to a restaurant and they're like, they don't have any Napa Valley Merlot on their list. Right. There might, but there's going to be something else on that list that I might like. And maybe it has nothing to do with Napa and has nothing to do with Merlot. It could be from a completely different re region. And so would your app help that consumer find that wine in the taste match technology? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's where like the user similarity comes into play. So you have 10 yeah. users and nine of the users have rated five wines all the same. And yeah. the 10th user has rated uh, <clears throat> all but one, the exact same. Then we can statistically calculate the probability of how much you're going to like that wine while we combine that with the characteristics of the wines from uh, the features that we have on the metadata, the wine. Cool. So, okay, so I got the wine list in front of me. I have the app in my hand. What do I do? Yeah. Uh, pull out your phone. Uh huh. And you <laughs> open up SIP, and there <laughs> is a big purple button. It looks like a camera right there. And <laughs> you just point at the wine list. It takes a photo. Um, we use computer vision that turns a photo into text. It goes through a pipeline, uh, does like a lot of like behind the scenes magic, then matches it to our database. And once we know the wine, we hit your profile and the algorithm and then serve up the uh, taste match score, which is from zero to 100. So it would take the wine, it would give me a picture of the wine list and then tell me for each wine, how much I'm, how I match to it. Yep, it'll tell you that. It'll give you a description of the wine. It'll give you food pairings. Um, you can also sort and filter. So, like, let's say next time you and I go out to eat, or the first time it will be, uh, we decide to get, like, steak and salmon. Uh, yeah. You can filter and show me just steak and salmon based on my taste match, or maybe I want to see it in the order of the wine list. You can do that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, or maybe we just want to see reds or just whites. You can also filter on that. And you, can you filter on price? Like I'm not spending more than a hundred yeah, bucks. Not, not on price, price yet. Um, <laughs> but yeah. you can look at the price. <laughs> yeah, you can look at the price. So I think that would be a, certainly a future feature. All right. So this is something that always happens um, with me. So I, I like a lot of different types of wines, right? I'm I'm a lot more adventurous than say my husband. Um, did you hear that? Uh, no. <laughs> But, you know, he's, he likes, you know, like he likes his Sauvignon Blanc, for example, like very clean and crisp and whatever. And I like that as well, but I also like a bunch of other things. We need to buy, find a bottle of wine that we both like. <laughs> what happens? How do we, yeah. can we use sips for that? You can, as of like three weeks ago. Um, oh, very good. So, that was a timely question. Uh, we just released a feature called Combined Taste Match, which was really like our initial dream of what it would be. It was like kind of helping my fiance's situation. Right, it's back to her problem on the girls' trip. <laughs> you can invite your friends through SIPT. Um, you send them a text link or you have like a, your own QR code or your own SIPT ID. Um, mm -hmm. You add them and then uh, you can check in on the home screen if you want to shop uh, and order bottles for home. Um, you can also do that on the wine list scanner and it recalculates the scores that in it encapsulates your preferences amongst the group. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really cool. It's so, been a lot of fun. Our users are loving it. Um, yeah. I'm loving it. Uh, I've, we've been using it quite a bit recently and I wouldn't say pleasantly surprised, but like very, <laughs> very happy with the results. We, we have tried to break it a little bit, picking yeah. things that, uh, I think in technology, you're always pleasantly surprised when things work. You're like, oh. <laughs> and they don't, you just keep working on it. Which is <laughs> yes. Idea. Yeah. Well, you know, it happens. It, it helps to have uh, a nice background in technology. Now, do you have, um, did you bring any team members? Like, what? what's what, What's your team makeup? Yeah, team composition. Uh, when I initially started, we used a consulting firm to build it out. <clears throat> Uh, COVID happened and we needed to pivot quickly and I ha already had some folks that I've been working with in my previous company that were engaged with SIPT, but it wasn't like a built out complete core team. Yeah. Uh, when we did the pivot, I decided to bring it all in house. Um, so I brought some of the folks from my old company, a couple people just from my network. Um, and then you just along the journey, I met some really amazing, incredibly intelligent people that uh, also get behind this vision um, and we were able to build this amazing company and team. And it sounds like, I mean, you know, like, so you, ha you know, you had this vision, um, you you're solving a real problem, but you, this all like the early stages of this, we're in the middle of COVID, <laughs> right? Like, so you're, yeah. you're a company that's coming out of the, you know, that was developed basically during the pandemic for solutions that at that time, people weren't in as much, right? Like if I picked no. a bottle, wrong bottle of wine for my husband and I, he's just going to have to deal because he can't go anywhere. <laughs> no. But, man, but yeah. you know, like, sort of like, as things are opening up, you know, um, it's, this is becoming something that's, it's really relevant again, all of a sudden, yeah. like, Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, COVID was, it was so hard on a lot of people. Um, and you know, our own little story was, we spent almost a year developing the first iteration of SIPT, uh, which was much more restaurant focused. Like yeah. we didn't have a marketplace to purchase wines. It was help you find restaurants and that have wines that you're going to like. So in any city, you can say, okay, I want to see Italian, this price point. And then we could, if we had the wine list there, we could show you based on your score. And then if we didn't, you could of course just show up and take a photo of the wine list. And now we have a QR code as well. Um, but COVID happened, we were about 85% of the way uh, to completion. So thinking, think like a month and a half before we were gonna go live. <clears throat> and the global rest- dream. <laughs> yeah. The global restaurant industry shut down and yes, we're like, wow, we've, like, what do we do? Like we have, we like just took stock of all of our assets. So it's like, okay, yeah. we, we have the infrastructure, we have the data, we have the recommender. Um, 
what's everyone doing now? And at the same time, I mean, I think everyone thought COVID was going to be three weeks of you know, staycation, flatten the curve. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of wine purchasing and consumption. And, you know, online wine sales went up 240%, which is crazy. Um, yeah. So we were, we always wanted to build out a marketplace, and it was really just a forcing function to do that figure first. that out then before we launched. Uh, but we created a Chrome extension that actually integrates with different retailers. And then when you're on their websites, <clears throat> you can see your taste profile, see the description, see the food pairing. You can wish list it. You can rate it. Uh, the more you rate, by the way, the better the algorithm gets. We have a, a bare minimum of three, uh, which is which will give you a, like a good experience. Like you're going to be happy. But if you really want to hone it in, mm-hmm. it, it's the algorithm never forgets. It just, it learns and learns. So the, the more you teach it, the more it helps you. Um, so, so yeah, we built out the extension. <clears throat> and the hard thing about extensions is people don't typically use those for retail unless you're something like Honey, uh, which is like the, the discount. Uh, if you're just surfing on retail sites. With yeah. Discount on it. Uh, so we, we quickly learned that we should take our learnings from the Chrome extension, look at the features that we currently had in the mobile application, figure out which ones we should keep, uh, the which were like, you know, fully built out and we were confident in them, Mm -hmm. and then apply the marketplace that we'd already developed in the Chrome extension to the mobile app. So we the whole team did a double pivot. We rallied around it. And uh, finally in uh, April, we launched uh, in the, Google Play in the Apple uh, App Store. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, it's um, good fishtailing there. I mean, you know, <laughs> so many businesses obviously were really, really affected by the pandemic, but um, it's sort of a unique position to be in launching a company mid-pandemic and having to shift your your approach to accommodate what's now happening and then shift back. Um, so it's, it's a lot to do for a young company and kudos to you for, yeah, for, our next uh, really for just like, you know, break necking <laughs> each way, but, um, it was a real test. Uh, yeah. it was, it was an exciting time, right? Because it's survival. Um, so it's stressful, but it's like, okay, yeah. like, let's see what's happening in the market. Like, let's try to understand how can... The, the core use case still exists, right? It's like helping people see into the future, know what they're going to like before they've ever had it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we just have to figure out how do we get to those people when and they... Where is it applied? Where is it applied in, at that time and whatever is going exactly. on in the world? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, you... it, it was a good learning experience. I'm probably, if I, could, if I had a choice... I would not have elected to have to go through a pivot, but you know, have to the, go through that learning experience. No, <laughs> uh, but so much was learned from it. And you know, the best, you know, if you want to build a lasting, valuable, you know, company or solution, uh, you have to just understand reality and try to adapt to it as quickly and as well as possible. Yeah. I think that's a, a great lesson for any company. Um, so what do you, you know, and knowing, uh, that things change, uh, but uh, but also you know having a having a vision for the future. What what do you see SIPT doing? Like what what's what's in SIPT's future for the next you know three six months? Yeah, that's a great year. question. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to continue to build out the combined taste match like social features. Like we really want to build ex- like we want to build an application that helps our users have experiences with their loved ones like their, their friends and their family. Mm-hmm. So combined taste match is the beginning of it. But um, let's say you're unable to travel for, you know, Mother's Day or the holidays. Um, what about gifting? So you can see your friends and your family's like top taste matches on yeah. the and mail it directly to them, right? And we that, have to connect so you know what to buy me for Christmas. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> <you're> <laughs> So like that, and just like, you know, allowing people to kind of share their experiences more. So like, yeah. you know, think about the like more social feeds, like, yeah. you know, Amy was here and she had this wine in why it matters to you is we, we would probably only surface those if they're like high taste matches to you. Right. Yeah. 
So yeah. a lot of you just dig a little bit deeper, but like see it through the lens of like your friends that are on set. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, our long-term vision is, uh, we have this internal saying, Amazon started with books, we started with wine. Um, I love wine, but in the same use case, the same challenges exist across a lot of different product categories. And mm -hmm. it would make sense for us to just kind of stay in the lane of like alcohol. So whiskey, you know, that <clears throat> there's so many different products within that category. Um, spirits in general. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, our plan is to build the foundation, the experience here, and then start opening it up to offer the same value to consumers of other adult bever beverages. Very so. cool. Very cool. Well, we're sipping all of these things. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it makes a lot of sense. Well, thank you so much for for joining um, joining me today. This was uh, this was an awesome uh, podcast. I hope to have you on again and uh, check in periodically and see I how. Things are yeah, and this was a great way to roll into the weekend. I always love to see your face and speak with you. You're always full of such oh. good questions and insights. So I'm very grateful. Yeah. My pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. It was great to see you and have a lovely weekend. Cheers. Right. A little glass yeah. of wine. Now, so cheers and. <laughs> <laughs> Log it so we know, you know, what we can drink together when we meet up. <laughs> I shall. I All think right. it's going to be Domain Camaro's front gate, Pinot Noir. It's, uh, it's been one I've been loving a lot recently, which I found on set. So. Oh, very good. Awesome. <laughs> Bringing it all back together. Right, so. All right.